I'm here to talk about the electrical signal to the nerves and basically the relationship between our bodies, the nerve cells, and how they react to certain sensations, feelings, and etc. And this dates back to the late 14th century BC with our guy in the top left, Aristotle, who believed that the nerves came from the heart because back then they didn't have dissections to see all of this, not much thought into it. So he believed that since the heart was the first organ of the body, that it controlled everything. But our guy in the middle, Galen, a Roman physician in the sixth century contradicted this and said that the brain is the most important organ of the body and was in control of all of the, our sensations, our feelings. And he proposed the idea of the nervous system and the spinal cord as an extension to our brain and the idea of soft and hard nerves. And this was in the early Renaissance era where dissections of our nerves and our bodies and organs began. So there was more thought into this. And then a century later on the guy in the top right, Nicholas Copernicus had the idea of sensory and motor nerves, but he believed that animal spirits were a part of this. Like it was also kind of like a spiritual sense that we had spirits living inside of us, kind of. It was kind of odd. And then in 1653, Will Harvey also semi-believed this, but with more dissection, he um, kind of like discovered the optic and auditory nerves. And this brought more of a sense of which nerves worked what and just how we heard, like, felt everything. And this was all between the years 1300 BC and 1700 BC in the early Renaissance era, where people started using more science-related concepts and discovered more with our bodies through dissection. Here's a microscopic view of what the neuron or nerve cell looks like all throughout our nervous system, which stretches to our spinal cord, muscles, etc. And on the top left are is the dendrites. And the dendrite is a branch-like structure that connects to other nerve cells that transmits messages, also like neuron talk, that allows for our, like all the nerves to feel a sensation. And then after that is the cell body of the nerve that has the nucleus with its DNA information and it contains a mitochondria, ribosomes, etc. And then after that is the axon. This the axon is covered in myelin, a type of fat that makes the transmission of nerve impulses faster to each nerve. So this pretty much is the basic control of how our nerves feel everything. And then at the end of that is the axon terminal, which connects to other dendrites of other nerves that allow for this transmission of um, electrochemicals. So this is when the dendrites come into play and they connect to other nerves, which creates a synapse, which basically the nerves are together, but they don't actually touch. And this is because of the synaptic cleft, which is the gap in between the nerves which allows for neurotransmitters to set, send impulses and information to other nerves. Once the neurotransmitters pass through the synaptic cleft, they begin flowing through ionic channels found in the plasma membrane of the axon. This membrane is composed of specialized proteins that are not permeable, but begin opening and closing depending on the voltage or the movement of the neurotransmitters once they reach the cell. And their movement is what creates an ionic current and changes the membrane potential of the membrane. And this, di this dictates the voltage or concentration gradients of the ions found inside of the membrane. And ions such as sodium, potassium, calcium, and chloride is what they have their own ionic channels that brings them to an excited state caused by the voltage. And once they're put in an excited state is when we start feeling the impulses throughout our nerve. And then a state of rest is what we feel after, basically, when we're 
done feeling whatever we're feeling. And this is all must be maintained at an equilibrium through the flows of the neurotransmitters and the voltage. And for example, like the voltage of our nerves at a resting state can go from a negative 60 to negative 95 millivolts. And this is because all cells have a negative intracellular potential. And our potentials are all, like everything's pretty much dictated by the neurotransmitters. And they go from excited to rest and kept at an equilibrium as neurotransmitters flow and throughout one direction from the cells. You Since can our say. bodies are composed of millions of nerves, they're divided into nerve classes throughout the nervous system. Depending on how your body reacts to certain foods, um, pressure, injury, or etc. So one being the cranial nerve class is based off of your five senses that sends information to your brain. So whenever you taste something, smell something, your brain tells you, oh, this smells funny, this tastes good, this tastes bad, etc. And then the central nerve class is basically your brain to your spinal cord, which is, it's pretty brief. And then it goes to the peripheral where your spinal cord dictates how your limbs move. And this can be described through being paralyzed because once you're paralyzed, your limbs stop working because the spinal cord is such a important part of your nerve system. And the autonomic nerve class is pretty much your brain and your spinal cord relaying information to your pretty much every single organ in your body. So whenever you eat something that could upset your stomach, that's pretty much autonomic working, or you're out of breath or you have allergies, your brain tells you, oh, like your brain sends information to those body parts and can dictate whether you're sick, you're feeling wheezy, you're under pressure, stressed, etc. Nerve cells are one of the most sensitive structures of our body that can easily be damaged through pressure, stretching, burning, and this is all conducted on top of the myelin covering of our axons. And since the axon is an important part of the neurotransmitting of signals, the once the axon is damaged or anything is done to it, the electrical signal will stop and the nerve impulse from the specific axon is gone. So this is like a semi-numb feeling to our nerve. Like I said before, our nerves can be easily damaged through in like certain injury on our body and can have short-term and long-term effects. So an example of a short-term effect can be a athletic injury, which I myself have hyperextended certain limbs of my body. And if anyone else has, it's obviously a pain because your body has been overstretched and the myelin around the axon of our nerve cells has been stretched as well and it takes longer for the nerve impulses to go through our nerve cells. But this can be easily recovered through obviously recovery and less usage of that nerve. But long-term nerve damage can include um, severe burning. As you can see, I myself have touched hot pans before and it's a long-term burn and that part of your nerve can be physically affected, visual to our eyes, but you basically can lose feeling in that area from the burn after um, obviously feeling that burning part, but the nerves are permanently damaged. Not all nerve damage is visible to the human eye. Obviously, if it's a self-conducted injury or your own observation, and you feel like sense something wrong or you lose feeling, you obviously know you've damaged something. But in other instances where you are unaware physically of what's going on with your body, primarily the brain, which is a major part of the nervous system, is why in 1924, the EEG or electroencephalogram was invented to record your brain waves, the impulses, just basically how your brain's working. And this is through electrode discs 
connected to the surface of your head, connected by wires onto a machine that records your brain waves. And this is analyzed by neurologists or doctors who can find out what's going on with the body. And this can include a brain tumor, sleeping disorders, a stroke, which obviously you cannot visually see what's going on inside your brain, but if you encounter a stroke and you can receive nerve damage from the stroke, this is why the EEG was created because not only can our nerves be physically seen, seen to be damaged, but it can't be visible to the eye because it's inside our brain, obviously.